And I'm very happy to welcome you all to the seventh event of the Lanaka Conference, where we want to deal with the reality of tomorrow's AI and robotics. And I welcome you together with Rebecca Manos, my co-host. Before we dive into today's topic and present our panelists to you, I would like to give you a short introduction to the Lanaka Conferences itself. It started in 2080 when Gitta Pines' idea was to bring people from all over the world together with their different cultural and educational background to discuss the burning issues of our time and furthermore to find actionable ways to tackle them. Of course, this event has been developed over the years and today we find ourselves in a series of conferences on meta crises and urgent challenges of our world. Of challenges uh, we want to uh, solve together in a connected and collaborative manner. Thus, all of us will generate and be part of a global social sculpture. This term dates back to Joseph Beuys, a former German artist, and means that we will create and shape society together. To support this idea and support, to support you, the panelists, and all our participants in building this social sculpture, we prepared a padlet. We are invite uh, each of you to place a short description of yourself and your possible contribution to our topics. I would just uh, now try to share at least this slide. <laughs> oh, wait, let's have let's have a nice last try on this. So here you can uh, see the URL of uh, the Padlet or you have the QR code uh, where you can uh, take a, a shot on your, on your smartphone. The panelists are already have already been entered, but of course we invite all uh, participants as well to do so. And before we dive into the content, I would like to give you a short idea of how to Lanaka. How to, how to do this conference. Um, we already started with a publication of the keynote by uh, Bart the Hippo <laughs> and, and Gitta, um, and you uh, were invited to watch the keynote on YouTube um, prior to this conference today. Right now we're in the panel uh, where we have the, the panelists discussing the input um, of the keynote. And you can, all of you can watch this conversation uh, in the YouTube stream. Then there is a chat for the audience uh, where everybody can put questions, give own ideas and uh, statements or help us to find blind spots. This will take one hour. Then we will have a short break where everybody can just drink something or whatever you need to do. Uh, and afterwards we meet in the backstage area to have uh, facilitated breakout sessions with the panelists and the participants. And here again, we may discuss um, what we've heard before. We may bring in new ideas and we may find out what we could do to tackle the challenges connected to our topic. Everything we find out, everything we discuss, will be um, published afterwards uh, in Karl Auer Verlag. And then you see our coffee room. Unfortunately, it's a, it's an, a virtual coffee room, you, so you have to bring your own coffee. <laughs> but uh, this is uh, the, the, the possibility to meet informally with each other, to have uh, informal discussions, and of course, to connect to each other. One of the plans uh, is to, to go on developing Formweld Online. And I suppose Gitta will say some words to Formweld Online as well. So if you, uh, if you like, feel free to donate for this concept and this project. So now let's, let's uh, join in and just have a short look on what uh, what was the keynote? What did Gitta and Bart the Hippo talk about in the keynote, Rebecca? 
Yeah, so just maybe a few summarizing words for all of you, because I'm sure you have enjoyed the keynote as much as I have, but still it's sometimes good to just recap a little bit what were the key points there. So basically, as a Bart is from the area of um, healthcare and actually working in the field of using data in the healthcare field, all the keynote more or less revolved around that. Basically, it's a keynote about data usage in the healthcare field and BART advocates for the free use of data and open sourcing of source codes and findings gathered. He is argumenting that coming from a time where actually the free sharing of knowledge was fundamental for the development of our society as it is today, that actually an increasing capitalization of data and this short-sighted actually protection of IP leads to a two-class medicine and also to data islands creations that might in the end limit humanity overall to grow as exponentially as we were used to. And it might prevent us from solving the major crises of our time that we have today. That's why also with his company or with his NGO, actually he is working in that field to advocate for open usage of data and source codes. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you very much. Um, I just have a short discussion with Cadell, who didn't, who doesn't find the chat. Just a, a second, please. You want me to take over, maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, thank you, Bart, for contributing the keynote. In the structure of the conference, we are now inviting the other panelists as well to give their statements on your keynote. So reacting, adding their own thoughts. And we are in our course starting with Gita, although she is not the first one in the alphabet, but she would also like to add a few welcoming remarks as well as being the host of the conference. And um, Martin, would you shortly introduce Gita for us? I'm back again. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so Gita Pain. Um, she is an economist and founder and director of the Formwelten Institute, the initiator of the Lanaka conferences. She's co-inventor of Formwelt and Weltform systems researcher and cyberneticist. Gitta loves marzipan and swimming, and she can prepare a wonderful potato salad. And she can ah. talk for hours about language, clarity, and complexity management until all listeners thinking marbles are smoking properly from all the spinning. And I invite you, Gitta, now to, to spin our marbles, our thinking marbles. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. But it was noodle salad, not potatoes. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> it's a killer Sorry. noodle salad. <laughs> Thank you so much. I have been looking forward to this conference for weeks because issues have been raised here by you, Bart, that have been bothering me for decades. <laughs> <laughs> On the one hand, of course, there is the infinitely important question of how we can deal with medical data in particular in such a way that all of humanity can benefit from its analysis without only big pharma and big data corporations profiting from it as if we were their very own guinea pigs. On the other hand, however, I've always been concerned about the idea that and how the social media companies, Facebook, Metaverse, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on, create structures that are specifically designed to make us so emotional that we can be exploited for marketing purposes. Um, I'm fundamentally disturbed by the idea that platforms are being built under the guise of social that contribute so massively, especially here and now, to our inability to properly address the really urgent problems, namely, for example, the looming climate catastrophe. When I think about how much not only human but also physical energy flows into disputes at the lowest level of complexity on Twitter, for example, I think about what we could do with this energy instead. I realize how important it is that we start to switch to consistently constructive. Now, of course, that does not mean just being nice and friendly all the time, um, but it does mean consistently supporting and collaborating on projects where we can see that some, something sustainable will come out of it. What I like about Hippo AI and also about Sourceless, the blockchain work of Alexandru Stratulat and Julian Bondari, is exactly this consistently constructive. And Bart said something that touched me deeply. 
We can only trust people, not machines. In my opinion, this is exactly where we have to start additionally, because since trust works paradoxically and therefore always brings along mistrust at the same time, we can at most talk about trust on the meta level, because as soon as we ask the question of trust, we rhythmize ourselves directly into environments of mistrust. I have never experienced that the question of trust was not directly co-posed by people who had the intention to exploit it accordingly. So at that point, we do not get anywhere like that. We have to ask about the structures that foster trust. In the area of big data and in the area of our medical data, this absolutely includes what Bart de Witte said about this. We can support this by systemically promoting educational projects that are accompanied by artificial intelligence that are not exploited by big corporations, but that belong to everyone as a non-profit project and whose results promote and support everyone. Such is the idea that we are pursuing here from Formwelt that in the long term, we will create an artificial intelligence that we call Eli our elevated linguistic intelligence, which will help us to create meaning clearly. Trust is built through experience, through successful interaction. It cannot be put inside us and it does not grow by talking about it. By building social architectures that release everyone into their creativity to contribute, we create the best conditions for building cultures of trust, where we can argue while knowing that it does not have to divide us, because that is what trust is. We know we can disappoint each other, but we can still stay together afterwards and thereby mend the rift. So what interests me the most in this discussion today is how machines can help us build cultures of trust without having to enter into the discussion itself. This also includes how uh, human knowledge can be appreciated or rather what machines we need for that to happen. There's definitely a lot we can learn from Bart's approach. And I'm also curious to hear what our friends from Sourceless, Alexandru and Julian, have to say about it. I myself can contribute to this with a bit of insider fun from Formwelt research related to AI, checking our texts for the density of meaning, helping us get clearer about ourselves and how we can build a machine that helps us overcome the bottleneck of linear language. And thereby we can collectively become much more intelligent and capable of complexity management than we already are. Thanks to all of you guys for being here today. And I am excited to hear your ideas. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I think we can we can um, head start, <laughs> let's say, because I really want to, to answer some of your um, some of your um, points. Um, you have right having um, that trust uh, issue. I think, uh, Alexandru, Rebecca much. first want to introduce you to the uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, audience. Sorry. Sorry, I, want... <laughs> I love that you jumped right in. It's perfectly to... fine. Yeah. Thank you so much. Actually, I encouraged you beforehand to comment on each other. And now we are telling you, oh, but guys, actually, we have a little structure we would like to follow. <laughs> we are overall um, suggesting to go by alphabetical order. So I would just like to check quickly in with Julian, how he feels about maybe taking um, the first step or leaving the stage to Alexandru before he shares his thoughts. No, actually we talked before, so I, I will take the, the lead here. Okay, good. Then I think All I can right. first hand to Martin to properly introduce you All right. to make sure everyone knows. Who's so speaking? sorry, Alexandru, are you okay with this? Is, is this something yeah, you wanted to say course. you can add later? No, no, of course yeah, I okay. will <laughs> add my time. Sorry, sorry for uh, for having, but it was a, a little pause and I think it's better to to, to get in uh, into the subject. So it's not a problem on my side. Okay, thank you, Alexandru. So I will just shortly introduce Julian Bondari to, uh, to all of you. 
Uh, he's an entrepreneur and futurist. He's a graphic and web designer. He's co-founder of Sourceless Blockchain, regional coordinator of the Venus Project, and ambassador for International Organization of Human Rights. Many years ago, immediately after high school, he played in a rock band, and the style approached was called Deathcore, which seems to be the superlative of heavy metal. <laughs> I tried it these days. It's really death. <laughs> so he was a real rocker with very, very long hair, as you might not imagine today. Uh, and starting with playing guitar for an association of people with disabilities, Julian Tugay today gathered over 15 years of volunteering for various organizations. It's a very pleasure for me to have you here, Julian. The same. All right. <clears throat> so good evening, everyone. But depending on which side or the plan, maybe be morning or day. Um, Thank you all for having us participate in this wonderful uh, Larnaca conferences. And at the same time, I want to thank uh, a big thank to Gita for the invitation and for all the effort she put in. So thank you. Um, regarding the keynote in which Bart uh, highlighted some aspects related to artificial intelligence and the impact on our future, and given the multiple topics he touched in the discussion, I uh, have extracted some ideas. And so I will begin with the following uh, statement. We are all some tiny, unexperienced cyborgs. And now before we get weird about this, uh, let's look um, uh, at what actually cyborg means and forget about uh, projecting our uh, own ideas from movies or science fiction. So a cyborg is a being with both organic and biomechatronic body parts. Although may confuse with uh, the term of Android, but they are, they are different and we'll, we will see why. <clears throat> to go further, I will quote the following uh, sentence. It applies to an organism that has restored function or enhanced abilities due to the integration of some artificial component or technology that relies on some sort of feedback. Um, to make a parenthesis, uh, there is a book written by uh, Woodrow Barfield, which is called uh, Cyber Humans, Our Future with Machines. And I do recommend it if he's interested about this. Uh, it is predicted that robots will surpass human intelligence within the next uh, 15 years. This, was, this book was uh, published in um, 2015. So it means uh, that the bar film makes his prediction starting with the year uh, 2030. The ever increasing speed of uh, advances in technology and neuroscience coupled with the creation of uh, supercomputers and enhanced body parts, it is, is paving our um, way for a merge of human being and machine. Devices that uh, which were once worn on the body now are being implanted into the body. Bodies who are now uh, displaying a range of skills beyond those of normal human being. Cyber Humans, the book, provides a deep and unique perspective uh, on the technological uh, features of humanity and describes on how low and policy will be particularly relevant in creating a fair and equal society and protecting uh, the liberties of uh, different life forms which will emerge in the 21st century. Mm, last year, MIT, Researchers have uh, identified a powerful new antibiotic compound by using a machine learning algorithm. The compound model, which can uh, screen more than, uh, than 100 million chemicals compounds in a matter of days, is uh, designed to pick up potential antibiotics that kill bacteria using different mechanisms. And now, about the symbiosis between humans, uh, artificial intelligence, and robots, there was a paper published in 1960 called Man-Computer Symbiosis. 
another uh, paper which I encourage you to read. This uh, publication was written by uh, a weird name, a long name, Joseph Carl Robnett Leak Leader. This paper describes uh, his vision for uh, complementary relationships, a symbiosis between human and computers at the potential time of the future. So these thoughts have not come to light recently, but have developed and continue to develop for many years. In our daily lives, of course, in modern society where everyone has access to a smartphone and to the internet, these technologies, only these two technologies, improve our lives exponentially. So let's take the smartphone for an example. We bring it everywhere with us. We go to the bathroom. Uh, we keep it close to us when we, when we sleep. It offers us the latest news on how the weather is, helps us order food, supplements, medica medication, etc. And just by having it always at hand, it improve uh, and improving our lives is a way of already being ourselves as um, mini cyborgs. Mini, as I said, with small experience, like a level one in a game. Uh, but, and the smartphone, of course, is not just the only gadget. Um, this gadget these gadgets are um, not quite human, of course, and maybe like many of us, although we are uh, biologically humans, we do not bother to show too much of that uh, aspect, which is why I tend to use um, two labels, two categories. And uh, I call them one, of course, humans, and the other are people. And why do I do that? Uh, well, in my opinion, in my point of view, people refers to the cult, automatic society that involves do this and do that. While I tend to think uh, of humans as the empathic, empathic part. So I see the difference as a cold and heat. So what will the future bring to us in terms of, uh, of artificial intelligence? I think from a correct and fair answer would be, we do not know. We can only speculate or analyze the present as, uh, and extract some fairly simple and uh, basic ideas and data, but as a prediction. At the moment, we have uh, technological tools, which we mostly use as uh, toys, because that's how we learn from childhood to play with something until we find a useful, uh, a real useful way to use them. Or on the other hand, we can throw them at people passing by. As an example, let's look back at our um, society darkest time, times and not, not the now we are too bright. What have we chosen to do to use the nuclear power for? Instead of using its uh, enormous energy in a beneficial way by updating and upgrading current uh, technologies and uh, enhancing our lives. This is a big uh, stage where we are right now. As long as big corporations and capitalism flourish, I think it seems to me that we need to think ahead of time and uh, create an antidote, to all, an antidote to all of the technologies we embrace. Something like a on-off switch so we can have control. On. And I recently heard this uh, short quote, which I really, really like. And it says, in the pursuit of great, we fail to we fail to do good. And this makes you think a little on if and how to embrace greatness. And although we do not uh, realize it, but I think we have already entered an important transition to a totally different and new society. We've all heard of supercomputers, amazing AIs, blockchains, cryptocurrency or if anyone ever heard about distributed ledger technology. On the big picture, I think they all revive, revolve around two major issues and that's security and trust. And here I think um, I will hand over my, uh, my relay to Alex 
we'll give you some information about uh, what we are building, why we embrace AI, artificial intelligence, and why we think we need to give people access to new tools, and especially security, trust, and control. Because um, the future is for all of us, and thus we must work together. And a great example is what we are doing right now here at the uh, Larnaca conferences. And that's it for now. I will pass that to Alex. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julian. Thank you. And before Alex is taking the ball and following on on security and trust, let me just briefly introduce him also to our audiences as well. So we have the pleasure to actually welcome today also Alexandru Stratulat from Romania. He is a blockchain architect and founder of Sourceless Blockchain, where actually he proposes a unique type of software which will help any user to maintain security at military grade, a unique certified identity inside the ecosystem, a new web remapping and different web protocols, including encrypted P2P and blockchain ownership for web domains, all powered by blockchain industry. This year, Alex and the Sourceless team actually have started the integration of the new software and the designing as well, and they are preparing it for the beta launch. So we are very curious to hear what your progress is so far and hearing a bit more about security and trust in that software. Thank you. Hi, and thank you for the presentation. And thank you all guys for, uh, for inviting us uh, at Larnaca conferences, Ita, Bart, all the other people that uh, that made su uh, such efforts for uh, for uh, having us gathering here to share some ideas and I think some some new and better solution that uh, that um, um, that are existing right now. So um, beside the, the introduction of Julian and. Really, to answer uh, Gita's about the trust, everything I think uh, should be uh, seen as a big image. Um, I will start and introduce a very short resume of uh, what we are uh, trying to accomplish by Susan Blockchain. Um, I think it's my opinion, and from here, uh, from my opinion, since 2016, everything came to what is today a better version of a new web. I am um, I'm telling um, it's a really a new web because it's a software with uh, all the web characteristics, but without having, I think, the major issues in today's web. We don't have one single failure point. We are based on peer-to-peer. -peer. We are based on um, sharing information and uh, trust by blockchain. Um, we are using blockchain distributed ledger technology in all the definition. We are trying to, to um, use not um, the protocols that are used since 90 till today, the hypertext protocol, I think it's an obsolete and I think it has a lot of, of security issues. So today I think the, the metaverse, it's a keyword. In my opinion, it's only a keyword. Metaverse exists since few years, um, uh, behind us, but now it's a new keyword. No, we are thinking all the way it's a metaverse. It doesn't matter if we are talking about, um, let's say Facebook or um, Google or Google Maps, everything, it's a metaverse, but on different technologies. I think blockchain can solve a lot of trash these issues. When we are, uh, we keep the, the identity. The identity will be um, in Sula's network, will, will be on str. That name, your name. That can be a perfect um, white ID. 
everything uh, can be um, transformed in a new um, in a new let's say like torrent like web where every person um, has his own property as a web address i don't want to 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 have a worldwide web address what are the opportunities today there are none there are few companies that keep the monopole and so on no i think i i don't really like what uh, uh, www means today i want to have a web that is my property that i uh, i want to handle my own information Okay, I understand. Not all of us are, let's say, like IT guys or programmers or cybersecurity experts and so on. For this reason, we are trying to help them. We are trying to introduce also the AI in a good manner. Um, if my mother, my father, and everyone, uh, my girlfriend, and everyone um that are not it related let's say they can use the technology with the help of ai and today we are trying to to make this with the help of uh gpt3 or let's say like open ie technology and also with formal <laughs> we are still uh, <laughs> we are still in um, um let's say in um affiliation for now but i think everyone can uh, put a um, put a helping hand to to deal this in the best way for the all of the of the people and this can be done with uh, the help of us in an open source manner we are not we we don't want to transform this in a, a business like this today we are thinking that the hosting space that is behind every website on the internet, it doesn't matter of social networks and everything, there is a client to server connection. Really, I don't trust that. Why my information uh, must go to, like Gita uh, told us, to, uh, and Bart also to Zuckerberg? <laughs> I don't want to be part of this. Why? Okay, we have GDPR, so there are a lot of examples. Okay, security flows. No, I don't think that is the, the best way to, to translate this into a security issue. We have the blockchain. The blockchain can do what all the servers on, the, on this planet and the, all the security team, teams from the entire world cannot do can encrypt my information to have anonymity while I'm straight and white, um, let's say like a white hat uh, person uh, without uh, anyone knowing what is my identity, um, anyone having the, the my data. I don't really want to share. Okay, everything is encrypted in a safe block in the blockchain. But also, when we are dealing with the, the information of everyone, to have an, uh, to get an str that domain address, which is a, a little part, is like an, let's say, like an ID, in the new web. That ID must be verifiable, uh, verifiable by uh, anyone that thinks we are, uh, let's say, in a in a real problem. If I done something wrong, uh, there must be some control. But also, there, there are a lot of uh, problem solving uh, in the security issues from uh, since 10 years till today. So I think um, the software, because it's not just a browser, we are thinking, we are discussing in our team. It's just me and Julian here, but we are a whole team, which are, uh, we try to, to have the best 
for us and also for our members. And we are trying to see what is what we build till now. So it's not a browser, it's not a software, it's not an operating system. Really, I think the, the, best, the best definition, it's a new web. It's a new web with the paths connected by blockchain, with the identity secured by blockchain, uh, with the hosting uh, shared between us. Uh, I put at an open source level to our use. So we control what we do in the best military grade like, like you, you present me and sourceless. Uh, without having any human mistake that is possible, I don't know, in the, in the near future. So for this, I think the, the best way to deal with the information today is by connecting all the, the goodies in the technology in an open source. We are uh, proud to name ourselves as a community blockchain. A lot of friends, maybe angel investors and so on, ask me, but this is not, uh, is not like a, a profitable business. I, I don't intend to, to transform us in a corporation. Yes, I understand we need to have money, we need to build things, we need to, uh, to share them to the people, we need to um, get equipments, uh, pay bills like everyone else, but we can do this without turning ourselves in the next Facebook or there are a lot of examples. And uh, a lot of these guys that are near me, they are asking me, okay, Alex, understand. You want to, to make uh, the same thing, but in a different way. No, I don't want to make the same thing. I, I'm trying to, to transform the web into people pro uh, property. In this case, myself, um, I can have the most secure um, information on this planet um, in our beta version and demo version that we are dealing today. There is no need of any antivirus or malware protection and so on. Why? Because that cannot execute on the blockchain. This is the, the, the best thing since that the first um, malware software appearance. I have like um, a lot of tests done in my room <laughs> with, on my equipment in which I am trying to, to, to see maybe I am mistaken. I think something it's a mistake. Maybe it's a mistake. Uh, but until now, is not a mistake. So I think we are creating something which will be major. Uh, and for now, um, I invite you guys to, to take a look on our website. And after, after the presentation, we can discuss. I am open to, to answer all the questions. Thank you again for inviting us and uh, keep the good job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. Absolutely. And there will be plenty of room for discussion in our backstage session. And I'm sure people will be curious to bring up a few questions. Before we go there and before we go to the break, we would, of course, like to allow Bart the Hippo to also comment on what he has heard now so far of all of you reacting to his keynote. Um, Gita was so kind to already introduce Bart also in the beginning of the keynote, but let me just summarize very quickly a few words on Bart. So Bart de Witte, actually not Bart the Hippo, is from Belgium and he is a leading and renowned expert and developer in digital transformation and healthcare in Europe and a progressive thought leader in his field. 
and he focuses on developing alternative strategies to create a more desirable future for all of us in a postmodern world. We heard before that Bart is the initiator of the Berlin-based nonprofit organization Hippo, which explains also his background picture, an AI foundation which aims to make artificial intelligence in medicine a community asset, creating a foundation for sustainable and equitable society. And actually, the foundation has won several renowned prizes lately. Congratulations on that. And now, Bart, over to you to comment on what you heard so far. Thank you, Thank you Rebecca, for this nice introduction. Um, by the way, the hippo comes from Hippocrates, but uh, as every, uh -huh. open source, every open source movement needs a mascot. And Linux at a penguin, we chose the hippo. And then uh, going back to the uh, origins from uh, healthcare medicine, because Hippocrates, in his original um, 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 ethical uh, foundation, he wrote that physicians were obliged to um, share their knowledge for free. So um, <coughs> free knowledge and, um, and open knowledge was the basis of um, everything what advanced medicine. So that's why we said, like, when we build AI, we want to keep up uh, with that philosophy. Um, um, and thank you, Alexandru. Uh, thank you, Julian. I, I, I would really want to see an old video of you as a rocker. <laughs> <laughs> I will bypass that. <laughs> it's a secret. Uh, uh, thank you. Like your, your statements were, were quite um, going into one single domain, which is a technical domain. Um, um, and um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very familiar as well with, with um, um, hyperledges and the blockchain as a, as a technology. But I think I wanted to um, really also point out that this is the, the, the thing what we are addressing is not only a technology part because it, it, it's data ownership, yes, and, and identity uh, ownership, yes, but then still, what do we do? Um, how far do we go with human agency, human autonomy, all these kind of elements that are really important and who um, um, is then kind of, uh, even in healthcare, um, uh, who is then the person responsible for bringing um, these medical decision towards those patients, um, you will always need an entity for that in that sense. So it, there's quite a lot of complexity as well when it comes to, um, um, I've been discussing with quite a lot of uh, blockchain uh, technology companies on uh, um, um, following the idea that we own our data and, and, and that uh, through the chain we can collect that data and create what they call them data marketplaces. So we would get uh, benefits back from sharing our data. And I said, yeah, that's all theoretically quite um, 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 important or can be theoretically be put in, into a, a concept. But in reality, um, we are 10 years away from making that even uh, available because the data that we have today in healthcare, in my domain, um, has a clinical context and data always has context. So if you put on data points out of different decentralized data collectors, um, these uh, data collectors or the, the, the data that you use is, is not going to have the same context. It's not standardizable. It is um, even clinical decisions are not always made in the same context. So if you have all these single data points and then you try to bring them together and apply machine learning on that, and these all have a different context, you, you're going to get a mess. So what, what, what I discovered is that we really need to um, centralize, like build huge cohorts, because the magic is within the data relationships of all the different cohorts, but still we need quite a lot of standardization within that data so we can standardize the context um, and, and get meaningful uh, insights out of the data. So um, decentralizing data is, is good when, once you start applying it, perhaps. Uh, but um, I'm far away from using these technologies in, in, in my concept because we, we don't even have these large cohorts um, uh, available as open data, as data commons at the moment. So that would be my, my comment as, um, uh, uh, on, based on the intros of, of, of you, uh, Julian and Alexandru. Yeah, uh, if I can shortly answer uh, to you, yeah, you have right. There are always need some uh, central points, but isolated. In a 
we are we are thinking that um, the best definition for our blockchain is something between public and private. Mm -hmm. On the private side of our blockchain, in such a uh, university use our blockchain, we already have some, some partnership with some universities. We are trying to, to get the, the best way for dealing with the decentralization, but in a, um, in a good connecting way. Uh, for this reason, we are talking about Sources Blockchain as a hybrid blockchain. Um, we are thinking that each institution also held in our country that the health, um, the, the part of the, the health industry in our country has a big problem with the data decentralization and data connection back. And you have right. There are, it's um, a need of a huge processing data center to, to get all the information back and having also in real time the best decision. For this, we are thinking that every institution, every company like yours, it doesn't matter if it's a foundation or health system in a country or it doesn't matter. It should have a central um, owning point in which uh, they can uh, take the decentralized information and uh, connect it to the big node inside their, uh, let's say, the, their institution. In this way, you can have a, a big, um, a big data center that can help with the uh, decentralized point in all the network. So if we are thinking at torrents, it's like a seeding way of dealing with the data. We have one big data file and the other are the seeding points. This is the way I see this, this problem that, that you, are, uh, uh, you are pointing into. Okay, so it looks like is we are having lots of points for discussion in the breakout session. Uh, and before we, uh, we change over to the session room, um, I would like to invite Patrick and Cadell from the chat to, uh, to the yeah. panel right now. And maybe as well, Robert, we will facilitate the breakout session afterwards. And maybe we get a, a short glimpse uh, into what uh, happened in between in the chat. So, Cadell and Patrick, may I ask you to join us? Hi, Cadell. Welcome. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, how is the weather in the chat? Was it stormy? <laughs> Uh, a little, maybe a little stormy. There's some questions about ethics that would be interesting to approach. Um, that, that stuck out to me. And I think that that's a, a pretty interesting uh, connection to um, Bart's uh, keynote um, that, that might be, yeah, might be interesting for discussion. Uh, there are a few other uh, topics that came up uh, specifically about um, technology and reducing the amount of work we do as opposed to increasing the amount of work we do. I think that's a that's another uh, interesting angle that might be approached. So maybe you can just give us some some of the questions so, sure. so we can take them with us to to the breakout session. Sure. Uh, let me pull some. Okay. So do you want me to just uh, keynote? Um, do you want me to just speak them? There's yes, a, that, yes. a comment from Andreas is, I was wondering the following after the keynote, is there an effort to ethically restrict the use of AI in certain areas such as weapons technology? Um, there's another question from Kathleen that I thought was interesting. She said, I work in social work, mainly physically difficult. It means domestic support and care for people in need of care. From my point of view, it is not yet an issue how and when such, such activities can be facilitated by AI. 
Um, and basically what I think she means by that is uh, it's not clear how we can reduce physical labor with AI. Is it possible to get these questions in writing somehow? Um, tech guys? Robert, yeah, maybe Patrick, we could maybe Martin? we could maybe we could paste them in the chat in the session room later on. Yeah, that would be helpful. Patrick, would that be possible? Yeah, that would be possible. Yeah, that would be helpful, I think. Let yeah. Me do that. Yeah, and um, the chat will go on, Kadel and uh, Robert yeah. and Patrick. Yeah, so um, we will hear later on and when you join in again, what's going on there. Sure, I'll just yeah, I'll stay, keep my eye on the chat and pull out some golden nuggets if there's any. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we, we can transfer the uh, interesting questions then to the breakout sessions. Lovely. That's beautiful. Good. Okay. Maybe some immediate reactions on uh, the questions out of the chat from anybody. Bart, you yeah. seem to... yeah. On the ethics and AI, um, there was, um, I can, this is a very restricted European view, but uh, as European claims to lead the ethical discussion, um, uh, perhaps it's an important uh, one to mention, but there was uh, a group of experts, which was called the um, uh, High Level Expert uh, Commission for Ethical AI. Um, and one um, a friend of mine who is a professor in, in um, uh, philosophy for minds uh, was part of that expert group and um, he had these red flags in that uh, framework that uh, was about autonomous weapons and using AI for um, uh, well warfare and uh, they wanted to have in that paper uh, red flags uh, on the ethical level and um, uh, based on the industry lobby within that group uh, all these red flags were eliminated of that paper. Um, so um, there was no possibility, even on a European level, uh, to kind of, even when you talk about ethics and a create a framework of ethics, to even bring that into a discussion. So I want to, <laughs> I don't want to disappoint or um, take the hope of many people, but um, well, these things are quite quickly happening and these technologies are being adopted in the industrial warfare or military complex. Um, and I have no clue how we can um, um, fight against that as, as the people, as humanity, uh, but we are doing exactly the same uh, as in any other race. There are some initiatives from the, from the United Nations, but uh, perhaps we will end up in the same that first some com countries will have the technology and then forbid other countries to have the technology as well. Um, so there are the asymmetries of power that keep on existing. Uh, I, I rather would prefer personally that no, none of these countries would have uh, the access, but that's quite difficult. It is You can equip a drone with an easy machine learning algorithm to attack and uh, use a facial recognition image algorithm. Uh, that's not so difficult to develop anymore. Um, everybody can do that at home and uh, attach a gun to that. and send it out so um so where you're gonna go and and how do you gonna limit uh, the use of these uh, technologies which is a, a very interesting point uh, i was a member of a discussion earlier which is also which also had a topic of uh, ai and we came also across about this topic and it is uh, so my is my my uh, my thought my my uh, understanding was we are facing the problem of ethics because it was mainly in the past uh, down to uh, boundaries to geographic uh, uh, extensions. So within Europe, within a country, whatever, uh, ethic was was uh, um, able to to uh, grow. And now we are talking about a, a global um, like AI or a blockchain or web. So there is no uh, geographical um, borders where people, like in Europe, have a somehow a, a similar history, which leads to ethics. And uh, therefore, it is exactly what you described. Um, the, the, to, to come to a point where we all agree to some ethics, 
it's really difficult in the future. Yeah, let's see. Okay. So, thanks. Yeah. One, one small thing <laughs> concerning uh, how do, uh, um, uh, um, uh, told of the question Kathleen had um, when it comes to AI and robotics and uh, social care. Um, I think we should have a deeper look on what Yona Welker and Sonny Chung and um, others are doing, um, especially many Asian coders in this uh, field, because there are many women out there right now working on a lot of interesting stuff in AI. So one thing I think we should do from Lanaka conferences is creating a link list with interesting projects and uh, work that is already done. So when people have this kind of question, we can relate them to this link list. Yeah, I'm always looking for what we can do here. Great idea. <laughs> yes, yes. To support. Okay. So thank you all up to now. So we will have a short break now until 10 minutes past five and then meet in the breakout session. The link is uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the mail, I think you all might have uh, received. Yeah. Okay, so see you, see you there and thank you so far.